G'day, it's Bill here from Side Real Trading. I'm an astrophotographer and I'm used to getting images of things which are literally hundreds of thousands of light years across and putting them onto a camera sensor which is, you know, that size. But astrophotographers and astronomers in general have got a problem that just won't go away. What do you do when it's raining? Well, you use the same astrophotographic techniques to get something which is this big. Yep, your wet day activity is macro photography. Until recently, I thought that macro photography was when you use a lens like this one to get up really close to your subject and take a single image. And you can, but as you know, the astrophotographer's creed is I want more. And the same applies to macro photography. The great thing about what I'm about to show you is it's accessible. And by that, I mean cheaper, way cheaper than even my mid-level astrophotographic rig, especially if you've already got a DSLR. Focus stacked macro photography is pretty analogous to image stacking in astrophotography. Astrophotographers use lots and lots of images and they process them to increase the signal to noise ratio. Well, macro photographers take a lot of images and they processing, process those just to get the little areas which are in focus. Okay, so what are you gonna need for this? You're gonna need a camera and a lens and you're gonna need to have something to manage the focus. You're gonna have to have some subjects, the feather or some other bits and pieces, and you're gonna need to have some focus stacking software. I'm assuming you've already got a DSLR and a lens for this. I'm using Diego's DSLR, it's a Canon. Um, it's easy to get the reversing ring for it. Now I didn't know this until recently, but a ring like this enables you to take your lens off and put it on back to front. And that turns it into a macro lens. It just goes on the front, the, the filter, filter thing there. And then you just turn this around and uh, it goes in that way and pops on there. And there's your macro lens. The problem is the depth of field that you get when, with your lens like this is so infinitesimally small that you need to take the same photograph hundreds of times as you move through that focus area. And that's what this is for. What this is essentially is a stepper motor which moves your camera forwards and backwards at very, very small and manageable steps so that you can move it gently through that focus zone. The other thing about it is that you don't need to touch it. This one you can control using your mobile phone and that's very, very important. If you're photographing a star field and somebody bumps your camera, that's okay, you can just re-register those photographs. But if you're photographing something like this and it moves, you've lost your shot. Now the focus stacking software we're using here is called Helicon Focus and it's available for Windows, which we're using, or Apple. Finally, you're gonna need something to photograph. Um, I'm a bird watcher, so I tend to be attracted by flip feathers. Um, there's numismologists who like photographing coins. Uh, electronics buffs and people who make PCBs will, uh, will, will do that. Um, Diego is uh, a, a bug fanatic. He loves his, this is his bug. Um, alternatively, my daughter is doing botany, so she's into flowers and small leaves and stuff. Okay, let's, let's get it going. This is a video I took yesterday. Uh, I was using the plain Wii Macro Rail with, uh, powered by my mobile phone. It was just using the camera and the reversed lens. Um, the image that I was taking was, was the back of one of these guys. Um, I was using available light, which so no flash or anything like that. Then I took some test images for uh, to, to, to get the exposure right. So let's go to the video. You find the range that you're focusing through. So let's go forwards until it's nearly there. Something like that. Set as the start. And then move forwards until you're right through the range and out the other side. Oop set as the end, it moves back, 
Now, it's going to take 28 photographs, so press the run button. And watch it do its thing. And there we go. Okay, so that was the capture process that we did yesterday. Um, when it was finished, I simply downloaded the camera and put it onto the computer and gave it to Helicon Focus. Um, I took around about 30 photographs in all, but I found that the camera had moved out of the focus zone after about 12, so I've got 12 decent photographs to give to Helicon Focus. Of those, each one had in-focus areas and out-of-focus areas, and I'll show, put up a few subs on the screen here. Helicon Focus grabs the sharp parts from each of the, uh, of the subs that it can use, and it builds up the entire thing from that. So what's next? I want more. As you can see, I've reconfigured the rail here. I've got a vertical gantry, uh, so that means that we can take photographs from above. That's for subjects such as this coin that won't sit on a vertical surface, and you can get all sorts of different types of control over the, uh, over the positioning of your camera. But that's for the next video. Um, look for us on Side Aerial Trading's YouTube channels. Um, find us, rate us, leave a comment, it's always nice. Um, and uh, well, we'll see you next time. You know what? Up close, these things are pretty awesome.